243, 257, 277, 284, and 308. If you understand the simple number that these share in common, you'll easily be able to pick out the best bullets for your hunting situation. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're confused about selecting bullet weights, you're not alone. That's a very common question that pops up in sporting goods shops and blog sites and people write to me asking me what the best bullet weight is for their particular rifle. Now on that glass I showed you uh, several different uh, bullet diameters, different calibers, and they all had different bullet weights, but they all had one thing in common. And this is one thing that you can imprint in your memory forever. That number right there, the 240s, the third digit, uh, as long as you got the 2-4, the, the third digit is irrelevant. That's the sectional density. Now what is sectional density? Sectional density is actually a mathematical figure, which is the ratio of the bullet's weight in pounds to the square of its diameter. That's all there is to it. Now you don't have to commit that to memory. The bullet weight in pounds to the square of its diameter. It's a number which has been fixed and it's fixed to uh, because because those two numbers are unchangeable if you've got a particular if you've got a particular bullet diameter and you're using a particular bullet weight the sectional density is not changeable to, dependent upon any other factor so it can be a blunt bullet it can be pointed it can be bow tail it can be flat base it doesn't make any difference about the form factor the form factor relates to the ballistic coefficient and its ability to trace through the air its trajectory. But we're talking about something which is far more important for the, uh, for the hunter. The game hunter, I'm not talking about now the, the, the target shooter or the, uh, the uh, small varmint hunter because you're only looking about, a, you're only talking about a bullet which has got accuracy and speed to flatten your trajectory and have accuracy to strike the smallest possible group size. But what we're talking about with a game bullet is an entirely different feature and that has to do with its ability to penetrate through flesh and bone and to, to get through and through. Now, the number, that, the number that I just related to, bullets that have sectional densities in the 240s, those are categorically bullets which have been proven over time. I'm talking about ever since the beginning of the, the 20th century, ever since the, the late 1800s. These are bullet uh, sectional densities have been proven through time immemorial that work perfectly on deer size game up to 300 and more pounds. Um, now that that top number is where you start getting into caliber size because naturally a 243 bullet does not have the does not have the capacity to put a bullet a bigger bullet hole which is the necessary factor for, for killing game as the 30 caliber bullet which has a bigger hole and a bigger diameter bullet so frontal area has a lot to do with it and that frontal area is uh, requires greater power in order to plow through the same distance so that's why as, as, as the bullet frontal area goes up the case size has to get bigger in order to provide the same amount of penetration but the penetration factor of that of bullets which have a sectional density in the 240s is classically defined as the bullet weights which have been uh, very popular uh, ever since ever since certain cartridges have come out. Now the bullets on that glass, uh, every single one of them have bullets in the 240s. It's the 243 diameter bullet which is 100 grain, the 257 diameter bullet which is 115 grain, and there's a 277 diameter bullet, the 270 bullet which is 130 grain, and there's a 284 bullet, which is the for the 7 millimeter 08, a 280 Remington, or 7 millimeter Magnum, which is 140 grain, and you've got finally the 165 grain bullet in the 308 caliber. So all those have uh, sectional densities, which are in the 240s, and you know those are those have been classically defined as the most uh, efficient possible bullet lengths. Uh, and bullet weights for that particular uh, for that particular size game. Now, I want to talk about some I want to talk about some caveats to that. 
one of them is uh, velocity. You know, you can never have you can never have too much sectional density. So you can control velocity, keeping your velocity down to where at levels where you don't have excessive meat destruction. Say into the terminal velocities of 20, 26, 27, 2800 feet per second is is good. You know, terminal velocities in excess of that, you start rising in terms of uh, market destruction on. Uh, market destruction on uh, game tissue. So by elevating bullet weight and getting into a higher sectional density will never hurt you in, in the least as long as you're keeping your as long as you're keeping your velocity uh, at a manageable level where you don't have excessive tissue destruction and excessive meat destruction. Meat destruction can really get really get pronounced when you get velocities, terminal velocities with larger bullets, especially up over 27, 2800 feet per second. That's when you start getting this bloom of, uh, you know, very, very, you know, gelatinous meat that's inedible. And that, you know, you can, you can fill a shopping bag with uh, junk that goes into the trash rather than filling it fully a freezer. So you can moderate and always keep your sectional density uh, up as high as you want in order to keep your velocity down to controllable level. So bullets in the 240s are your classic deer bullets. Bullets which are uh, for classic use on uh, elk size game uh, or to keep your to keep your velocity down on magnum size cartridges now you start getting up, up into uh, the 270s and 280s. Bullets with sectional densities in the 270s and 280s that's the ideal range for your, your uh, caribou, elk, moose, and things like that. Um, bullets which are in the 300 category, there's your dangerous game bullets. Those are bullets which have sufficient, um, basically, they, they, have, they have sufficient uh, mass to uh, break bone and get through a lot of tissue and uh, sometimes go through and through on lengthwise shots. So those are tremendously, you know, tremendously efficient bullets. Now, what is sectional density exactly? What does it do besides its mathematical form? Well, sectional density is basically is the momentum factor of the bullet. It's how much it's how much remaining momentum it has to plow through uh, tissue. Because lightweight bullets simply, you know, they 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 strike and energy is very quickly dissipated, uh, very quickly, and they don't have they don't have momentum to carry through. If you've ever noticed that a, that across a given uh, cartridge, you'll notice that no matter what bullet weight you have uh, across a particular cartridge, the, the lightweight bullets and the heavyweight bullets don't have much difference in energy. Um, and that's because, that's because as the bullet weight goes up, the, the uh, velocity goes down and then as the, it, it turns around the other way, as the uh, bullet weight goes down, the velocity goes up, so it tends to flatten. It tends to flatten the energy figure. So it's not the energy factor that we're talking about. It's, a, it's we're talking about the momentum factor. How much that bullet uh, maintains its uh, maintains that forward energy to come out the other side instead of dissipating it. If you can think about, you know, these you, you see all the time, the uh, you know the vehicle crash tests that they do. Uh, you know, they, they put a car on a track with the dummies inside and everything. And the whole thing that tr they're trying to do is to dissipate energy very, very quickly. Well, that's your, that's your low sectional density bullet. That's, that's the bullet that immediately loses energy as soon as it strikes the target and doesn't have, enough, uh, doesn't have enough momentum to continue on through. The older cars that didn't dissipate energy into the front end of the car used to just keep on plowing and plowing and plowing and wreck everything all the way back to the rear the rear axle. I remember seeing that stuff. Uh, so the, there's a whole different thing. Now we're talking about a, a, a bullet has got to have sufficient sectional density to get on through. I watched a uh, YouTube not long ago where a guy was uh, hunting down in Pennsylvania with his 270 and he was using a hundred 110 grain bullet in his 270. Now we're talking about velocities are way up, like 3,400 feet per second or more. Um, and uh, he he struck his deer squarely um, in the in the side with uh, his 270 at about 40 yards away. It was it was taken on it was taken on uh, right there on camera, and the deer got away. And, and they they spent a long time looking for that deer because 
the bullet just simply went in uh, very shallow and it didn't do uh, didn't do an awful lot of through and through damage and that's the problem that you get with bullets with low sectional density they don't have enough they don't have enough mass to continue on through so you can't have too much sectional density but you can definitely have too little so you might ask well what about the two the 150 grain 30 caliber bullet that was very popular and still remains popular for the 308 and for the 3006 for for deer well it's kind of a carryover it's because the 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 150 grain bullet was a military weight uh, profile and you know as things go the commercial industry oftentimes mimics the military uh, industry when it comes to uh, manufacturing ammo so the 150 grain bullet was kind of a carryover um, and it's really it's really not the best it's not the best weight bullet uh, it can tend to have a little bit less momentum getting through um, with uh, I'm talking in 30 caliber uh, it does okay because the because the energy factor is so high with the 30 caliber rifle the 30, 308 and the 3006 and even the, the uh, 300 Winchester uh, the uh, 300 Savage rather years ago uh, the energy factor was high enough so that basically it got through by brute force in most cases but it's not the ideal weight uh, you can get your you can get your meat destruction down a little bit and have a little bit better uh, efficiency getting through the target with a 165 grain bullet which is in that again in the in the 240s it's always the 240s heavier game you're talking the elk and uh, moose things like that you're talking 270s bullets with bullets with sectional densities in the 270s and higher 270s 280s those are classic uh, and across all of those cartridges no matter what no matter what cartridge you're talking about, no matter what caliber you're talking about, if you have bullets which are in the 270s and 280s, you get yourself an elk caribou moose bullet. That's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to tell you that there's, there's a, uh, a little stinker that, that comes into the mix here. And remember, it has to do with the first, the first numbers that I gave you. It's the, it's the weight and diameter. As a bullet's going through, uh, weight and diameter both change. And they, the, the diameter becoming uh, broad, as, as diameter becomes broader, length has to get longer in order to affect the same sectional density. But the problem is that as a bullet's going through, it's getting broader and it's getting shorter. And as it's getting broader and shorter, it's oftentimes washing lead. If it's a, if it's a lead core bullet, washing lead off the front of the bullet. So it's also getting lighter. The sectional density that you started out with will be reducing as it's plowing through tissue. Now that number in the 240s is that basically takes that into account. That's why that that's why that particular bullet sectional density is very very good for virtually all deer size games because it takes that it takes that little factoid into consideration. That's why you don't want to get down into lighter weight bullets that have uh, you know in a given caliber that have lower sectional densities because as the bullet washes off the front and gets wider and shorter and in some in some cases if you got a petition bullet the the core completely washes away and you you end up with a, a banana peel that comes back along the shank and that sometimes can't get too far through if you've got too light a bullet so that's why you always want to keep your you always want to keep your sectional density within the 240s for deer side game in the 270s and 280s for elk size game and things like that because that makes sure that as those as those deformities occur through tissue that the bullet still has sufficient mass to get on through finally dangerous size game and things like that you're well into the you're well into the high 290s 300 uh, sectional density those are the bullets that have the ability to uh, not only not only get through the first few inches of uh, you know, hide, fat, and all those things on a heavy bear, but you also now still have enough rema remaining bullet, so it's going to bust through bone, break his shoulders down so he can't chase after you, and, and, and still penetrate through and through and get out his other side. So those are the bullets in the 300 sectional density. So remember the sectional density figures. Those, those figures right there is the perfect guide to selecting your bullet. All you have to do is pick the sectional density that is at least in the 240s for your deer size game, at least in the 270s 
for your elk size game and at least in the 300s for your for your big dangerous game stuff and your golden then moderate your impact velocities accordingly so if your impact velocities are expected to be at 250 yards on you know out in the prairie you're fine with your 270 or your 280 with the top velocity bullets 130 grain 140 grain but if you're talking about if you're talking about shooting in the woods with your 270 or your 280 you want to get a little bit higher sectional density which is a heavier bullet to keep your speeds down and have less meat destruction Hopefully I ironed out all that problem. Remember that number, 240s, and you get yourself a deer bullet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and God bless.